guys, Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash live in Holland. Jacob, one of the believers from Canada asked, please explain begotten in the Bible as it refers to Jesus. Does it mean revealed in the flesh? This word seems to be a big stumbling block for many people, and we know what the Muslims say about it. If it means revealed, why was the word begotten used? Well, let's understand the etymology of the word. Part of our problem is in translation into English. There is a very similar word used in biology, in Darwinism, or in the debate about Darwinism. It is called uh, monogenesis as opposed to polygenesis, or mo monogenism as opposed to polygenism. What that means is the human race evolved from one man, one woman, as opposed to multiple. Uh, modern genetic science, in fact, favors monogenism, which is obviously the biblical record of, of, of Adam and Eve. Uh, that's a biological term that sounds very similar. When we get into scripture, it becomes a bit more complicated if you don't know the Greek language. Let me do my best to explain. Genes, the word, we get the word genus or gene. Genes is the Greek equivalent of the Hebrew mean, mean, of a kind. The Hebrew term for sex and sexual reproduction is mene, mene, coming from the word kind. You were not to mix the seed. It was to stay of the kind. Human beings were <laughs> obviously not to engage in the abominations of the nations and have sexual relations with animals, bestiality. You were to keep to your kind. Now, of course, later racists came along and applied that along racial lines trying to give justification to things like apartheid in South Africa and segregation in the American South. That is, of course, utter nonsense. Black people, white people, oriental people are all homo sapiens. They're all of the same kind. Moses had a black African wife, etc. It's complete nonsense. This was certain Calvinistic people, generally, who had vested economic interests in the perpetuation of slavery and so forth that came up with these kinds of belief systems that were perversions of what the scripture teaches. It was to be within the kind, reproduction within the kind of the genes, of the genus, get the word gene, okay? That's the basic word, translating the Hebrew mean. Now, in the genealogy of Matthew, here the problem arises linguistically and in translation. <coughs> it says, this one begat that one, and that one begat the next one. Eogenes, Eogenes. That means to come from biologically, to come from biologically. Eogenes, that is a procreative term. Jesus, however, is the monogenes, monogenes. John chapter 1, and then five times in the New Testament, five times, he's referred to as the only begotten of the Father, the monogenes. What that means is one of the same kind, one of the same nature. It points to the pre-existence of Christ. It is not procreative begotten, but monogenes, <coughs> of the same kind. Everything that came into being was made through him. In John chapter 1, we see Jesus in the creation in Proverbs chapter 8, as well as in the book of Genesis. Nothing came into being that did not come, being, come into being through him as the Logos, one of the kind. He's the only one of the kind of the Father. 
He's the only one who is of the kind of the Father, who ever came in a human form. Now, of course, his human body was created by the Father, prepare a body for me, but he was pre-existent. And as we've said before, even the Incarnation did not, strictly speaking, set a precedent. We have Christophanes in the Old Testament. The angel of the Lord, the Metatron who wrestled with Jacob, Melchizedek, and so forth, these are Christophanes. When Adam heard God walking in the garden, this was the Son of God, who would be called Jesus when he came as a man. This is him, okay? One of the kind, but the only one of the kind. It speaks to his pre-existence. Now, it entails his being revealed. He reveals God. Jesus, show us the Father. You want to know what the Father's like? Look at Jesus. If you want to know what God is like, look at Jesus. That is what God is like. Look at Jesus. God accommodates himself to us by becoming one of us minus our sin. That is the meaning of the word monogenes, only begotten. Islam has this distorted idea that if Jesus was the Son of God, it meant that their God, their Nabataean moon God, who they confuse with the God of Scripture, Allah, procreated with the human woman. Again, following the Greek idea of Zeus, procreating with the human woman, begetting Hercules, the Superman. It's a paganistic concept that was well known in the Levant and the ancient Near East. It exists in Greek mythology and so forth. Well, there was a confusion of this pagan concept with the Hebraic concept of Jesus being begotten, only begotten of the Father. Islam does not understand this. Islam follows a Greek idea of God, of his being impassable. As we've explained before, a Greek or a Roman would have had no problem with John chapter 1 about the Logos until you get to verse 14 when the Logos becomes socks, the word becomes flesh. Well, Islam is the same. It can't handle anything other than the impassibility of God. It can't handle the idea of God becoming a man. That's the problem that Islam has in understanding the deity of Christ. But it is not revealed except in the sense that because he is the only begotten of the Father, the only one of the same genus as the Father of that kind, the only man who is of that kind with the Father, he reveals what the Father is like. In that sense, there is a revelation or a revealing of God in the person of Christ. But monogenes means monogenes, of the same kind. The rest of us are born again. We are sons by adoption. He, however, is different. He is the monogenes, the only begotten. Thank you so much for your question. My name is Jacob Prash. God bless. Now again, monogenes has to do with Jesus being of one substance with the Father. One substance of that kind. The early church fathers translated this into Greek, homoousias, homoousias, uh, like homogenous, of one substance with the Father. It points clearly not only to the pre-existence of Christ, but to the deity of Christ as he is of one substance with the Father. As Paul wrote, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. It points to his deity. Hence, monogenes is a term of plurality of the Godhead. It is a term of the deity of the Messiah, of Christ. And it points to this idea of his uniqueness. Now, there is a verse which says, the firstborn. We have to understand what that means. That does not mean firstborn, obviously, in the sense of progeny. It means firstborn in the place of eminence, the place of eminence. God becomes a man. He has the preeminence. All others who are born again are a result of him 
being the first. That is having the preeminence because he was not only sinless man, he was God in the flesh. He was the last Adam. Even Adam was not God in the flesh. Jesus created Adam. Thus, this idea of the firstborn, Jesus being the firstborn, does not mean the firstborn in the sense of biological reproduction. Monogenes, of one substance, homo usias, pre-existence, the divine nature, the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him. He is the reflection of God. He is the character of the Father, the likeness of the Father, the mirror of the Father. When you look into the mirror, you see your face. When we look at Jesus, we see God. Monogenes. Dear friends, greetings in Jesus. This is your friend Jacob Prash speaking to you at the moment from the UK. You know, so many of the questions we get in our Roku broadcast and on our Vimeo clips and on YouTube deal with subjects that we deal with much more extensively in our books. We can't, for the sake of brevity, uh, go into the kind of depth in a TV broadcast we can actually go into in a book. But so many of the questions come from material that are expounded in the books on a much more broader scale that it's almost frustrating sometimes that we can't spend hours and hours answering a, a, the questions that, that are given to us. Obviously, practicality dictates that's not a possibility. The books are there. They're available. They're available in print through the Moriel catalog on the Moriel website, moriel.org. But in this day of Kindle and electronic books, they're also available through Amazon and they're available through Kindle. Kindle. The three books that would be the most referred to in the questions we receive are the three latest books. The first being The Dilemma of Laodicea. The Dilemma of Laodicea is an exposition of the seven churches in Revelation, culminating with the final two churches, Philadelphia and Laodicea particularly, setting the stage for the return of Jesus. The Dilemma of Laodicea would be the first. The second would be Shadows of the Beast. Shadows of the Beast. How the coming Antichrist, how his identity will be revealed to the faithful church. The rapture will not happen. Will not happen, absolutely not happen, until the faithful church knows who the ultimate beast of Revelation is. That is the Antichrist and also the false prophet. How the identity of the coming Antichrist will be revealed to the faithful church Shadows of the Beast, the second book. And the final and latest one, Harpezo. Harpezo, what the scripture actually teaches about the rapture, the snatching away which takes place between the sixth and seventh seals in the book of Revelation. So these three books, The Blum of Laodicea, Shadows of the Beast, and Harpezo, all available on the Morial catalog, all available through Amazon, and all easily available electronically by Kendall. Thank you so much, dear friends. God bless. May Jesus be with you.